Howdy folks, it's Richie Procopio, aka Bogotter for Massively.com, and welcome to my video preview of the Sky Pirates of Tyria patch for Guild Wars 2. This patch is going to arrive on Tuesday, June 25th, and run through July 9th. Now to catch anybody up who hasn't been playing the Living Story in-game, during the Dragon Bash, during the Effigy Lighting Ceremony, a murder occurs. Theo Ashford, one of the council members, turns up dead, and it's up to the players, along with Marjorie Delacroix and Lion Guard Inspector Keel, to kind of figure out who did it. And through a series of in-game events, you can discover that my Trin has kind of done this whole dastardly deed in an attempt to get herself on the council. Now she is backed by a new faction called the Aether Blades. Now the Aether Blades are these lightning-wielding aerial pirates that team up with the Inquest and they're stirring up all kinds of trouble. So as part of the Sky Pirates of Tyria patch, we will be able to track down my Trin in her secret base in Lion's Arch and put an end to her nefarious plans. As you fight the Aether Blades, you'll earn achievements in the Sky Pirates section of your achievement panel. You'll get achievements for killing off different types of Aether Blades in different areas and finding Aether Blade caches that are scattered around Tyria. Earning 12 of these achievements will give you the Against the Aether Blades meta achievement, unlocking the mini first mate Hurric mini pet. Isn't he cute? Now also with this release, the Sea of Sorrows novel is releasing on June 25th. This is written by Resosby and it is the third Guild Wars 2 novel. It tells the story of Kobaya Mariner 150 years before the events of Guild Wars 2. Now, Kobaya Mariner is the grandfather of the current Commodore in Lion's Arch, Lawson Mariner. And we're going to hear about him uh, basically trying to save and rebuild Lion's Arch after Orr rises from the depths of the Sea of Sorrow and Zaitan comes and it creates that huge tidal wave that really destroys the town that we got to know and love in Guild Wars 1. Now, with the novel, there's going to be a scavenger hunt in-game. There are 12 Mariner's plaques scattered throughout Lion's Arch and the world. And if you locate all of these Mariner's plaques, you will receive an in-game Sea of Sorrows book that grants five skill points. Clues to find out where the Mariner's plaques are are located in the actual physical novel itself. you got to locate the famous places where Kobaya visits in the book to locate them. And this scavenger hunt is going to be a permanent addition to the game. Along with this patch, we have new exciting items in the gem store. For the first time since launch, we are getting a combat armor set. That's right, we are getting steampunk-themed Aetherblade armor sets. There's a different one for light, medium, and heavy, and they are available for direct purchase from the gem store when this patch goes live. You do not have to wait for a random rare chance from opening up a box or anything like that. You can purchase them directly, so get your steampunk rolling starting tomorrow. Now the biggest part of the content that's coming with this patch is a new living story dungeon called the Aether Blade Retreat. This five man dungeon is available only till July 9th and the entrance to this dungeon can be found on the western side of Lion's Arch underneath the waterfall behind an illusionary rock. It features a variety of different Aether Blade enemies with new visuals, tactics and rewards. Two difficult boss encounters will challenge players as they seek to reap new rewards such as rare savage materials and infinite tonic recipes. The final boss is the dangerous duo of My Trin and First Mate Horik, where you'll need to endure a multi-phase fight to complete. Prepare to dodge many cannon blasts, and there's a pro tip, kill Horik first. The end chest has the chance to drop some jackpot rewards, including new recipes, a lot of 100 dragon coffers, and a level 80 combat monocle headpiece. Rounding out this patch is a smorgasbord of new updates. First and foremost, a huge skill and trait balance is coming in this patch. Every single profession trait line is seeing changes to encourage greater build diversity. Necromancers are also seeing a new ability added to their death shroud called Tainted Shackles, which will cause nearby enemies to be inflicted with conditions and controlled if they don't take quick action. There's also a new condition type being added to the game called Torment. Enemies under Torment will take damage periodically, but if they move, they take even more damage. Thieves and Mesmers alongside of Necromancers will all be able to utilize Torment. Custom Arenas and Spectator Mode are coming out of beta, including Custom Arena Starter Kits are now going to be available in the Gem Store for those who want to try them out. Mortar Mastery is being added to the World vs. World skill lines and includes improvement like greater attack radius, more damage, reducing skill recharge, and adding a knockback to the blast zone. The Sky Pirates of Tyria patch is full of great changes, so make sure you jump in before July 9th to experience the fun. And don't forget that ArenaNet has already teased that a new jumping puzzle is coming out on July 1st, so stay tuned for information on that. 
Well, that's going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoy the Sky Pirates of Tyria coming out tomorrow, June 25th. And keep it locked and dialed in to Massively.com for all your MMO news. Take care, everybody, and have a great day.